Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Kevin. Welcome to the King's Table. I'm here with my little brother today to do a special video to encourage you. So please stay right there and stay with me because I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. I know God is ready. Me and my little brother are ready. But the question is, are you ready? And if you are, then let's do this. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to a, uh, today another chapter of the King's Table. It's kind of special for me today because I got my little brother Dorian with me today. Um, uh, uh, all I can say about my little brother is, you know, ever since he was born and coming up as a little boy, we, we used to play together and have a good time. My little brother Dorian is autistic, but, you know, that never made a difference in our coming up and our um, having fun together as kids. And in fact, we used to play a lot of games. I mean, I had friends coming up, but on those days I couldn't go outside or even on days when I was outside, you know. Dorian was a homebody. He didn't like getting out that much. But when we played in the house, we had fun, didn't we? Well, what was one of your favorite games? Hide and go seek. What else? After you. After you. Okay, now let me explain. After you, y'all like what? What is after you? It was similar to the game of tag, and we'd play it in the house. And you know, Dorian would tag me and take off running, and I'd have to chase him or vice versa and we just chase each other all over the house and we played remember hide and go seek and i would i would count count to 10 and you go run and hide only thing about my little brother dorian when he was little he giggled a whole lot he was he would giggle all the time so it wasn't that hard to find dorian because Dorian would hide in the closet, say, for instance, you know, I'd start downstairs at the stairwell and I'd, you know, do my little counting. And I'd say, okay, I'm coming. And I'd go and start looking for him, go upstairs. But I'd always find Dorian because he'd be in the closet or somewhere giggling. Or he might try to hide under the bed with his feet sticking out. <laughs> but we enjoyed uh that time coming together as 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 kids. Um, I'm I'm 54 right now, and Dorian is 53. And uh, you 53, ain't you? Yeah, I wish I looked as young as you. I don't look as young as you. <laughs> we had fun, didn't we? What's that? What's that? Oh, those are your snacks over there. Did you you think you want your snacks right now? What do you want? You want your cheese crackers? Yeah. Okay, let him have his cheese crackers. Yeah, give me the box and I'll put him a few. So, as I said, we enjoyed ourselves coming up as kids, and 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 that 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 tightness that we have is 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 amazing. And even now, because my oldest brother Dana takes care of Dorian since the um, passing of our parents, our dad our dad died. When Dorian was only about 12 or 13, I, was, I had just turned 15. And um, when my dad died, uh, you can give him a little more than that. He died then, and then our mom died about maybe 9, 10 years ago, if that long. And um, so, you know, it's we, we, we lean on each other. You know, of, of course, I may not be able to talk to my little brother about the stuff that I go through, but 
just having them around. You know, it's that tightness and that bond, you know, that we have as siblings. But, you know, it, it, it's that that we have that uh, that makes life beautiful. Yeah. You know, we're both old men now. We old men now, dude. Yeah, we old men. But we still enjoy each other's company. He comes over once a month, like I said, my oldest brother. Dana and his wife Sharon uh, take care of Dory and they have custody of him and you know they take good care of him but when he does come over once a month you know we we try to spoil him a little bit because uh, she gonna know if there's anything I can say about my little brother he loved to eat now if I ate as much as he did and was as thin framed as him Oh, please, that'd be a blessing. But I can't walk by ice cream shop without gaining 10 pounds. But, <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's life is beautiful and you love it, isn't it? And, and that bond that we have as siblings is tight. And when you have that type of closeness to a brother or a friend, it makes things amazing. It makes life so amazing and I'm reminded of the story in first Samuel chapter 18 of David and Jonathan and David Jonathan loved David he of course uh, Jonathan was Saul's son but David he loved like his own brother in fact I'm going to read a little bit from first Samuel chapter 18 and I'm going to start at verse 1 and it describes that type of fellowship and unity that these two men had for each other. They loved each other like brothers. And it says, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. They were knit together. <laughs> and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. He had that kind of, uh-oh. You just lost your chips, little brother. Um, you want to run and get your plate? Run and get your plate. Get your plate. <laughs> go on, get it. Don't don't hit the camera. There you go. Now you can come back and sit down. Come back and sit down. All right. Now you can scoot back close to, to me. There you go. All right, but I was at, where was I at in verse, verse three, then Jonathan David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of his robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even his sword and to his bow. Hold on to it. Keep your hand on it. And to his girdle. And David went out wheresoever Saul mm -hmm. sent him. Yeah. And behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people. And also in the Saul of, sight of, of Saul's servants. Now, loved him as a brother. Now, y'all know the, the way the story goes. It was... Uh, a, a, a point in time when Saul turned his back on David. See, the thing about brotherly love and the thing about caring for one another is, you know, it, 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 it creates such a fellowship. It creates a fellowship, not just of, of, of that friendship, but of heart. Jonathan said his soul he loved David to his soul. You want more? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And got my wife Mary, who's not in the shot, but she's here with us. But he loved him that much. Hold on to your plate so the wind don't blow it away. Okay? But that's what love and fellowship is. Jesus says, Jesus calls us his brother. And his love for us is so strong and, and, and it's so powerful 
we as God's people, when we he he commands even that we love our brothers and sisters in Christ the same way. In fact, God says for us to do good unto all men. But he he put a he put a, a kind of an asterisk behind. It. He said, but especially to those of the household of faith. See, I, I have a, a, a good friend of mine, and he's my assistant pastor by the name of Elder House. He's going to be on one of my videos here real soon, him and his wife. But me and him have been friends for a long time. And there's a period of time things got real rough for me and my wife, and we stayed with him for a minute. And then there was one time things kind of, Got a little rough for him and his wife, and they stayed with us for a minute. But we've always had that closeness of brotherhood to keep us, you know, in, 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 in some of our roughest times. But it's good to know that our relationship with our Father, and Jesus said the relationship that he desired for us to have with him is to be just like he is a friend that speaks closer than a brother. This this little skinny dude I got next to me, we grew up in the same house. We partake, we partook of the same table. We enjoyed life together. We sorrowed the same sorrow. Of course, he, you know, he couldn't really grasp the, 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 the loss of our parents as, as we did, but he felt the loss. Dorian struggled those years after the loss of my dad, and he struggled even more after the loss of our mom. But he knows that he has family that cares about him, takes care of him. And love it, boy. You just tan them crackers up. They good? Yeah. Uh huh. Can I have one? I can. Wow. Thanks, little brother. Appreciate that. Mm hmm. Done? All right. Well, that's. Excuse me, y'all. I had a cracker in my mouth. But that's how life is supposed to be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. That brotherly love, that fellowship, that kindness, that that unity. Like I said, my brother's 50 something years old and he still considers himself as being a young man. Dorian, up until a few years ago, Dorian would always say he was 12 years old. Up until he was about maybe 30 or 40. You'd ask Dorian how old was he? He'd say 12. So <laughs> what I did was I said, okay, Dorian, if you're content with being 12, here's what I'm going to say. Turn around. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, okay, then you just celebrated the 20th, 30th anniversary of your 12th birthday. And he was cool with that. So, but anyway, that's, that's what fellowship and love is. Love accommodates. It accommodates our, our brothers and our sisters, even in their weakness. And as, as people of God, there's times that we have to have that same type of love towards our brothers and sisters in Christ, even those who maybe just come into the faith. We have to have that love, that love that loves them in spite of. Nobody's going to walk this walk the same as you. They may be a babe in Christ. Some may be full grown. But we learn to love, respect, and be kind to one another. And accept each other just the way we are. And that's what makes life special. And I was sitting here thinking of a time, I'm going to remind you of it, Dory. 
Now, I'm going to tell you all something here on YouTube about me. As a young man, remember I used to get whoopings all the time. Remember that? Who who used to give me whoopings all the time? Who? Dad. Yep, Dad used to give me some whoopings all the time, didn't he? Well, like I said, Dorian, being who he is, I would get whoopings. And then what would happen was, like, my dad would whoop me and send me to my bedroom. And I couldn't come out of my bedroom. I was on punishment for the rest of the day. I couldn't go nowhere. I couldn't leave the house. Was in trouble? Yeah, I was in trouble, wasn't I? Uh -huh. Yeah. You were in trouble? I was in trouble. Big trouble. And punishment? And I was on punishment. And hard-headed? And I was hard Okay. That's enough comments for right now. Thank you for your unsolicited testimony. Anyway, but I would get on punishment and sent to the bedroom. Well, Dorian, because the bedrooms were upstairs in the apartments where we grew up. And at the top of the stairwell in my bedroom, as you could see the bedroom over to your left, my bedroom where I was. And Dorian would sit at the top of the stairs. And Dorian would be like uh, uh, laughing just hysterically. Kevin. You you get whooping? I said, yeah, Dorian, I got a whooping. Did it hurt? I said, yes, Dorian, it hurt. And Dorian, did it hurt bad? I said, yes, Dorian, it hurt bad. And then he just be on the stairs, just falling out. And I, one time he, I heard him, he went downstairs, and he was talking to Dad about it. He said, Dad, Ke Ke Kevin got whooping? He said, he's bad. And, I, you know, I'm like saying, I'm boiling in the bedroom. I'm like, you just wait till I get off punishment. It's me and you, buddy. It's me and you. No one getting well. I couldn't do nothing to my little brother. I loved him too much. And I accepted him as he was. He made life coming up just have fun. Even the neighborhood where we grew up at, you know, my neighbors loved Dorian. They were crazy about Dorian. They would buy Dorian snacks or bring him stuff over to the house. I remember one time in particular, um, I don't know if Dorian's going to remember or not, but Dorian, my mom thought Dorian was missing because, like I said, Dorian's a homebody. He was always in the house. But this particular day, Dorian wasn't at home. So my mom's like, she's getting frantic. Where's Dorian? Where's Tapo? Tapo was his nickname. So this is Tapo, y'all. Well, anyway, she said, where's Tapo? We couldn't find him anywhere. So my mom hollers outside, because we usually play in right there in the courtyard of our apartment complex. And, you know, it was like a little court area, to, you know, where we were. And she would holler out, Dorian. Well, one of our neighbors, by the name of Miss Barber, God rest her soul. Um, she hollered out her door. She said, Janie, don't worry. I got him. He's over here on my couch watching cartoons cracking up. And my mom was like, whew, that had me worried. But, yeah, I went over there because it was time for Dorian to come home and get his lunch. And went over there and, indeed, Dorian had his feet up on her couch <laughs> watching cartoons. Just having a good time. And Dorian was so friendly and loving. In fact, one of Orlando's friends came over one time. And he didn't, he, you know, like I said, he didn't know Dorian. But Dorian was so friendly. So Dorian sits right next to him. And puts his leg up on his lap. And I'm like, we're like, Dorian. You know, Dorian, you know, he got that looks like, what? He, he friend. But anyway, but. That's what makes brotherhood special. That's what makes fellowship special. Is when things are heart to heart. Um, of course, we had our we had our dark days. There were times that our parents struggled to keep food on the table. Kids these days they got it made. You know they get to pick and choose what they want. We the way we came up. Remember Dorian. 
It's like whatever mom and dad fixed for dinner, we had to eat. If we didn't eat it, what? Had to go to bed without it. I'm talking about me, never Dory. Dory got whatever he wanted. But anyway, we'd have to go to bed without our food if we complained about what was set before us on the table. Of course, this generation don't know nothing about that. And if we ever got McDonald's back in them days, and y'all know I'm talking about in the 70s or whatever, Boy, you thought you were living it up if you was able to get a even a, 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 a McDonald's sandwich with no fries. You thought you had it good. So we were content with such as we had. Was life difficult for our parents? Was, was life somewhat difficult for us as kids? But yeah, it may have been, but we didn't think about that. You know what we thought about? We thought about the fun we had. We thought about riding our bikes outside, or we thought about the 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 the, the fun we'd have on Christmas morning. Remember, mom and dad would buy our toys, and uh, the way they did it was they would tell us, you know, we couldn't get up until a certain time on Christmas morning because my dad always he wanted to see the expression him and my mom on our face when we opened our gifts. So we would try to sneak downstairs, but there was this one step at the top of the stairwell that always creaked. So they could always tell when we were trying to sneak downstairs. We'd try to skip over that one, but it, that one, it, something would end up making some noise, and they'd like, get back upstairs. But we, I remember the joy of going downstairs on Christmas morning and seeing all our toys and Open our presents, me, you, Carmen, and Venus, and, and Dana. Well, Dana was Dana was grown around that time. Yeah, remember it was just me, you, Carmen, and Venus. Yep, just us. We were the youngest ones. That's all. That's it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so we will come, like I said, come downstairs, open our toys and our gifts, and. Y'all know, parents, y'all know today, you got gift wrap paper all over the floor. You got cartons and containers that the toys were held in everywhere. And But we enjoyed that time. And, and I remember one particular incident. It was, remember the, no, it was the blizzard of 1978. And it was, that snow was deep outside. Remember the snow was real high? And remember when they did finally let y'all, we had to walk you to the to the school bus stop. And I remember your little legs, every step you take, it looked like the snow was all the way up to your hips. <laughs> but Dory, I mean, Orlando would walk you to school and take you to the bus stop. And we'd have to pick you back up because we were out of school. If my memory serves me correctly, almost a month. The snow was that high. I remember the snow drifts being all the way up to the window. In fact, they were so high. My friend of mine I grew up with lived next door to me named Alfred. We would like to play superhero and I'd, we'd wrap like a towel around us or something to make it look like a cape. And we'd go up to the upstairs bedroom, my upstairs bedroom, jump out the window into the snow because the snow was that deep so there wasn't no chance of us hurting ourselves because we were just going to sink down to snow. Well, we did that about three times. And guess what happened? Dad figured out what we was doing because he'd see us coming in, but he would never see us go out. So he said, what are y'all doing? I said, jumping out the window. Well, guess what happened? What did I get? Yep, I got a whoop. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, like I told you, I got in trouble a lot as a kid. But um, it was fun, and we had fun. And a lot of times I got in trouble because Dorian didn't hesitate to tell. Dorian, who, I get in trouble. My dad be like, who did this? Dorian, Kev did it. But anyway, like I said, you know, you can... As an individual, and I want to say this to some adults, because it's easy for us to look back on our lives 
as we get older and want to nitpick some things that maybe went on when we were children or some of the things that may have been said to us by our parents. And they may have been hurtful. But what I've learned in life is not to dwell on that negative so much. I've learned to let a lot of that go. And I've learned to cherish the memories of the good days and not the bad. Have I chosen to forget them? Yes, but on purpose. Because I'm like the Apostle Paul. I want to forget those things that are behind me. And I want to reach forth to those things that are before. I want to press towards the mark. I don't want to live in, like the video I did the other day, in unforgiveness. I want to enjoy life. I want to enjoy my family, my friends. I want to enjoy Dorian. Being a 50-something-year-old old old man, old man, and enjoy just him being in my life and being around me. Y'all know my testimony. I was diagnosed with cancer a couple years ago. And if I didn't have the faith, if God didn't come in and change the way I looked at things, If he didn't change my understanding of his word and understanding what he says is the only thing that matters, I probably wouldn't be here today. I enjoy life now. I enjoy the strength that he gives me every day to be able to breathe the fresh air, to do the things that I do. Has Situations and circumstances change from when we was little, yes. Mom didn't take care of Dorian no more. But he has a loving brother and sister, sister sister-in-law, that takes care of him. Let's love one another. In fact, if I wanted to title this video anything, it would be brotherly love. Let brotherly love continue. Let's love tight and strong like David and Jonathan. Let's not let anything come between us, especially if we're brothers and sisters in Christ, especially if you're family. You got somebody out there right now. You have a sibling who, when y'all were young, y'all enjoyed each other. But something happened. Something happened. And that thing that happened divided you from your brother or your sister. And y'all have lived quite a few years since then. And you still want to hold on to the hurt. Hello. Welcome back. And once again, my video, well, this time it wasn't my SD, SD card. It was my battery on my camera. So I just wanted to conclude what I was talking about at the park with my little brother. But if you're out there and you know that you got a family member or somebody that you was once close to and the years and after the initial separation or whatever it was, the hurt that was done and you separated, but if this day and age have this day and age has taught us anything, especially in the era of COVID nineteen, and that is time is precious. And you don't know how much time you have with the people that you love. Nor do you know um, when your time is. So, don't think or try to wait for the appropriate time or the right time to resolve whatever those differences are. 
But call your brother on the phone. Call your sister on the phone. And a good starting point will be to just start talking about the things that y'all both love. About the good times that y'all had. Don't harbor the ill will. Because I'm telling you, it'll do you more harm than good. But like my little brother Dory, these times mean a lot to me. And I would almost guarantee it means a lot to him as well. Stay encouraged. Love one another. Even as Christ also has loved the church. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And I'll see you again right here at the King's Table. I love you. God bless you.